Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Star Family Wisdom Podcast. It's so good to be here with you today. I'm Jenna Layden, the founder of Star Family Wisdom and also a former global vice president for Whole Foods Market. And I'm Sinead Willihan. I'm a former public school educator and activist and now the Star Family Wisdom co-host and instructor and content creator. And what we enjoy most is trying to basically turn your life upside down <laughs> in the best way possible by busting some paradigms and changing your perspective on what reality is. So we don't want to make you feel unsettled. We actually want to give you a really solid, comfortable place to land. So we try to provide all this opportunity to learn some unusual, you might say, information is definitely not uh, mainstream, but it is information that is just as real as any other. There are facts, there's evidence, there are, you know, generations of information and uh, uh, evidence and stories and all kinds of other things. I'm repeating myself now to back up what we know is true. And this knowledge is starting to come more and more into our mainstream lives. And so Jenna and I feel very passionate about bringing you this content so that you could be part of this majorly changing transformational time on Earth, not just for human beings, but for Earth herself and all their, all of their life on this planet. So we're so happy you're here. And we had an absolutely wonderful conversation today with the wonderful, brilliant and warm hearted Stephen Farmer, Dr. Stephen Farmer, who is a psychologist, a trauma specialist, a soul healer, an animal spirit specialist, you might say, and is somebody who does oracle card readings, has a very strong connection to Mother Earth. And he talks a lot about that, as well as shamanism. And he pre presents us with a wonderful surprise at the end of our conversation, which we're not going to tell you about. You have to watch it or listen to find out. Better to watch it, actually. Yes, we're on YouTube. So if you're not on YouTube, jump over there so that you can watch these conversations because these really are for your spiritual and cosmic evolution. So we talk about all of the things and we really do that today with Stephen. And it was, you know, such a beautiful practice together. You know, I consider these sorts of conversations spiritual practice. And when we come together in this way, and even you watching this podcast or listening to it at home, you're in spiritual practice by doing this. And so, you know, this, this really hit home for me today in that conversation with Stephen. And, you know, he shares so beautifully about his own journey of answering the call of spirit and um, about his journey of really bridging the physical and spiritual, which I think we're all trying to figure out in this life, right? And trying to figure out why we're here and what this is all about. And, you know, we really believe at Star Family Wisdom that this is really a process of remembering our history, our origins, the truth of who we are. And I think, you know, Stephen talks so eloquently about his journey through that and specifically through shamanic practice, which is, you know, near and dear to our hearts, both as shamanic practitioners and, you know, being very close to Mother Earth. And, you know, it almost felt like spirit, what it was, we know this, spirit was speaking through him to us and our audience in a way that gave just beautiful guidance today. Yeah, I, he he talks about um, how he was always a sensitive, empathic child, and he called himself, you know, a bit of a weird kid, meaning that he was sensitive, he was observant, he was kind of hanging back a bit, you know, more watching and, and sort of noticing what was going on around him rather than fully involving himself in things and having a sense of uh, being different, he said, and then later on in his life goes into a very standard, you know, typical kind of career path, becomes a psychologist, very left brain, right, wants to help people, wants to heal them, but then goes into shamanic healing, which is quite a big jump. And so he talks a bit about that transition and what it was like for him, which sounds remarkably smooth considering the stigma in that community. So that's really wonderful to hear. But then talks about how shamanism changed, not just his practice, but also his life himself and, you know, how he understands the interconnectedness of energy on Earth and how to utilize that energy in all its forms and all, all the ways that it comes to us with messages and guidance, how to actually utilize that to help ourselves transform, evolve, change, grow, heal. Yeah. 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 And we talk about spirit animals and power animals and how you know, his journey led him to understand that spirit is really just speaking through all things, right? And Sinead, you talk about this in the episode that all things are connected. And it's so, it's so cool to get to that point where you can learn about yourself and your experience in this existence through nature and through the world around you, because 
spirit, the mind of the universe, source, whatever you want to call it, is always in communion with us. And that's really what this conversation felt like, this opportunity to just talk about that communion and talk about the the guidance that is always available to us if we just take the time to tune in and slow down a little bit. And so I think this is a really great introduction for people to shamanic practice. So if this is an aspect of spirituality or spiritual practice that you're just not quite as familiar with, I think this conversation is a great starting point for anyone who's really curious about shamanism and, you know, going into that sort of practice. And so if anyone is wanting to take that further, uh, check out Stephen's website and offerings. First and foremost, he offers workshops and oracle readings and personal guidance uh, that will support you in your journey. Sometimes it's really helpful to be just one-on-one with a practitioner, a, a support system like that, so that you're you're receiving guidance, you know, from spirit through someone else if, if you're new to this. But we also on the Star Family Wisdom website have a shamanic practice course course that is very beginner level and introductory. So if you want to learn a little bit more about what we're talking about here around these different perceptual levels and um, kind of the basics of shamanic practice, go check that out because that's also a good place to start if you're wanting to just kind of, you know, zoom out and understand it all um, within that sort of context within how, how does this apply to my life? How do I even engage, you know, in this sort of shamanic practice myself? So, you know, it's our, our mission to support you and kind of getting started in a lot of different aspects of your spiritual and cosmic journey. Yeah. Yeah. To help you reconnect with all the tools and, th- and you know, aspects of life as a human that are available to us all the time to help us heal. And I love that one of the things Stephen talks about is our disconnection from nature and how getting back in touch with nature is so incredibly important for us to feel whole as a human being and for us to feel like we are the cosmic beings that we truly are, not just the earthly beings. But he talks about how to do that in such practical ways. And then at one point, he gestures to a tree that he has next to him, you know, a tree in a pot in his office. And it just reminded me that I think people often feel as part of that separateness and that distance from nature that you have to go somewhere to be in nature. But actually, if you're a plant person, you know that plants bring an incredible energy into your home and you can be with nature in your home. Ta-da! Janet's holding up her alo. Yeah, we're both plant people, you and I, because we know we know that importance. And it, it really does bring a feeling, not just oxygen, but also a certain life force energy into your home and gives you an opportunity to connect with plants and with animals, you know, even if you have pets. There are things that you can do that are directly in your environment that you can utilize to to help yourself heal, help yourself gain deeper intuition, deeper awareness of what's going on, deeper awareness of energy around us, and also get to know plants, get to know animals, get to, you know, develop an understanding of the language that they speak in, which is body language, of course, but with plants and animals, it's often vibrational and energetic as well. So he he gives us so much in uh, one of our shorter conversations. This one was just over an hour but he really packs it full of wonderful, wonderful insight, inspiration, and practical advice, as well as wisdom. I loved it. I love, I love too, how this conversation about connecting with nature and talking to trees and plants came right after you and I were talking about your conversation with Barbara recently and how both of you talk to your plants and commune with your plants, almost like they're buddies in your house, right? Like, like they're your children, they're your buddies, they're your friends. And, you know, I feel that way too. And it's like so fun to be able to have those conversations. And Stephen talks about that too, that we have to find community with people who we can talk about these things with, right? Where in the morning, I can let Sinead know what downloads or information from spirit came through when I was in my practice. And when else are we able to do that in our lives, right? So we have to be able to find those sorts of people and our community to be able to engage in that sort of conversation. So I just love that you you just had this beautiful conversation about your plant babies and friends. And then Stevens, you're talking about talking to plants. <laughs> I know. I love that as well. I really, I I just always appreciate plant people and animal people. You know, there's a kind of a gentle, a gentleness and a very heart centered um, feeling that I get from people like that. And so, yes, he was really emphasizing um, community and the importance of that and of finding your tribe. So 
this is another reason why you and I have created Star Family. Well, why you created Star Family Wisdom, and then I ended up hopping on board because we want to present to people a, a community where you can get this kind of information and you can investigate it with others and you can come together for discussions and for community and togetherness and a feeling of mutual understanding, which, as you were just saying, is not easy to find in the mainstream world. So. Yeah. Yeah, it is so important to come together and heal on all these levels that we can and help to heal the animals and the plants and the planet that are around us, not just ourselves. And speaking of community, stay tuned for the Star Family Wisdom Facebook group, which, which will be launching very soon in the next couple of months. So we, we've heard the call from all of you and from Spirit that we need a community space that's bigger, that is open for conversation and for all of you to interact and meet each other and, and talk about your experiences. So like Sinead said, it's really important that we are able to come together that way. So we'll, we'll keep you posted on when that launches and when we can all get together in there. We definitely will. We definitely will. Meanwhile, you know how we feel about liking and subscribing. So take that button and punch it, click it, and share this with your friends. Please tell them what, what we're about. If you feel like that's something that they are willing to take in, spread the word. This is information that everybody needs to know about, and not just from us, from our guests, from our incredible guests, and from all the resources that we provide for you. So like, 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 subscribe, 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 come back, join us again. We really love hearing from you, and we really love being with you. So please come back for more, and we'll keep building our community together for the benefit of us all. Thanks, everyone. We'll jump into it now so you can hear from Stephen. And I think you're, you're really going to enjoy this conversation. So we'll see you on the other side. Most definitely. See you on this, the other side, everyone. So we are here today, everyone, with the wonderful Stephen Farmer, Dr. Stephen Farmer, who we've been waiting with excitement, genuinely, to introduce to all of you. He's quite a fascinating person. He's been working in some fields that you're going to be interested in hearing more about for a very long time. He is a trauma specialist. He is a trained psychologist. He is also the author of several books, which are all about animal spirits, healing, oracle cards he reads oracle cards very well so i hear have not done a reading with him yet but i'm planning on that actually and very interested in helping human beings rediscover our very very important crucial connection to nature we are nature it is us and that is part of our healing on this planet and dr farmer really brings that into his work as a tra trauma specialist and a soul healer as well so dr farmer we want to welcome you to the podcast here today we really have been looking forward to this and you are a friend of our good friend jacob nordby yes. who sent you all the way we have to give him some kudos because we're grateful for that but welcome today and how are you how are you doing Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, too. Uh, I'm doing well. Uh, good energy today. Uh, I have a lot of stuff. If you saw my desk, uh, you know, it's one of those things where they say, you know, a clean desk is the sign of a sick mind. So I guess <laughs> I'm actually healthy. Uh, but no, it's, it's, it's fun. I feel, uh, I feel uh, good that I, I'm a workaholic. I confess, you know, I'm Capricorn, I'm triple earth sign, etc. And I just love the work that I do. You know, I feel very blessed in that way that I've been able to follow this path. And as you mentioned, a few things in, in terms of what I'm here for. Well, I came here for. Well, we're feeling blessed and grateful to, to have these conversations and to be on, on a similar path with you and um, just so good to, to meet you finally. And uh, you mentioned your earth signs and earth connection there. And maybe we can kick off with just a little discussion about your connection to earth. And I know you've done a ton of study on shamanic healing and practices and you're very like earth-based and in, in your practice and your work. And I'd love to hear more about how you got into that. How did you, how did you find that path? I know you've got the psychotherapy background, but how, how did that all come together for you? Well, I, uh, Jenna, thank you again for your welcome, uh, as well as need what you're welcome. Um, I will try to keep it somewhat condensed, but basically, like you said, you know, I'm a licensed, still a licensed psychotherapist. And I believe very, very strongly, actually, I know in my heart of hearts that we're called, you know, that there's something that starts to 
say niggle at us and certainly that was beginning to happen at a place where i had a very successful psychotherapy practice i enjoyed the work um i also was teaching at the time i taught at a local college um i've done workshops etc up to that point and i actually had you know, one two three four books that i published as a therapist and i revived one my very, very, very first book called Adult Children of Abusive Parents, which was about childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. And um, I revised it a few years ago, the 25th anniversary edition. And it still holds up. You know, I, I, I would change some things, of course, but it still holds up well. Anyway, um, through various influences, I got the call to shamanism. Mm -hmm. And it's something that we're seeing, we've seen in the last, let's say, 30 to 40 years, the last few decades, where there's an increasing interest in that, in part because uh, I hesitate to limit it to this, but it is more earth-based. Mm -hmm. You know, it includes celestial too, don't get me wrong, but it, it brings things down to earth, you know, literally and figuratively. So, um, and I was raised in Iowa and you know, have some pleasant memories about Iowa and big backyard and walking over to the big hill, it was called, uh, and just enjoying, you know, being outside, like I think many of us, you know, especially, you know, ones like uh, me growing up in the the 50s and 60s, etc. Anyway, okay, uh, cut to the chase. Um, I was, uh, I read a book, it was given to me by my partner at the time, called The Way of the Shaman by Michael Harner. I really piqued my curiosity and it's it's really a classic now mm -hmm. and Harner is a man that that has introduced a particular kind of shamanic practice he called core shamanism uh to oh god tens of thousands maybe hundreds of thousands of people and certainly that was a launch pad for me went to a two-day training and I left there on fire and I said this is it I you know just my heart of hearts I knew that's the direction I was moving uh, and also, uh, I, I eventually retired uh, the practice. Uh, now I brought a lot back, you know, from the practice and the trainings I got as a therapist, you know, that sort of woven into, you know, what it, when I meet somebody, what they're, um, you know, what do they need from me, that kind of thing. Um, I left there on fire and I just pursued training after training, you know, in shamanism. And it's one of those things, as you both know, I'm sure and all the listeners know it, it when it speaks to you that loudly you know you you, you almost have to respond yeah yeah uh, for the call of spirit <laughs> yes exactly and so that that that's the sh short end of it um then i went on uh retired the psychotherapy practice and then devoted my uh healing practice to shamanism and shamanic uh, healing in Along with that came, uh, let's say, opportunities to do some writing and developing publications on that. And as you mentioned, a few, Shanid, Shanid excuse me, um, quite a few, you know, I'm, I'm frankly a little, sometimes I look at it, I go, wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> it, it, it just seems like a, a, a little bit astounding, you know, that, uh, that, that, that this has happened, even I'm stuttering a little bit. And at the same time, at the same time, really pleased with the opportunity to do this and to get publications out because I'm very clear on that it's, it's, this is my service, you know, to inspire, to teach, to um, provide uh, healing practices, etc., to help us return. Um, let me put it this way. We're a forgetful species, mm -hmm. you know, we just... As a, a, a dear mentor of mine, Paul Fairweather, who's ancestor now, said, you know, he said, all this stuff we do in a conversation I had with all this stuff that we do, you know, these encounter trainings at the time, uh, therapy, uh, workshops, etc. He says, I think it's just to help us remember who we really are. Mm. Wow. Simple. Oh, yes. But it, yes, yeah, Jenna and later. I would completely agree with that layers you know so part of it is the remembrance of who we really are we're not disconnected and uh, forgive me for going off on this part but uh, I think it fits is this the images that are all over the place of the James Webb telescope that peered into the universe it was like this little tiny grain of sand the size of the grain of sand and all 
and there's like hundreds, if not thousands of galaxies. And within those galaxies, billions of stars, as, as it is true with our own, uh, well, our own, like we own it, but the Milky Way, you know, that we uh, in some way inhabit. That has been working me like crazy these last few days because I, it puts everything into this perspective. Mm -hmm. it says, okay, we only have a short time here. And I'm talking about not just you or I or a particular individual. Yes, that's true. But as human beings and as a species, we've not been here that long. Not really. And the planet, the light, apparently just one piece I remember was the, the light that, that we're seeing now is uh, from 4.6 billion years ago. I can't even get my head around that. And the planet's younger than that, slightly younger. Anyway, I just, I throw that in as a bit of a tangent, but I think it puts things in perspective. Anyway, to circle back to what I said, it feels like one aspect of my mission certainly is to encourage and facilitate as much as I possibly can that deep ancestral memory, and I call it that, of how we are related to everything. We can think about it conceptually and all that, but to actually practice it and in, in, um, do whatever we can to keep remembering because it really is a keep remembering process because yeah. we get forget we're forgetful and to um respect and develop that relationship that you have with not only the physical beings but spirit or god or source or any of those names that we sometimes say spirit i like that mm -hmm is really not just, um, how would I put this, not just the spirit of, let's say, that particular tree I keep glancing at out here over to my left, but that there's, first off, there's the tree. That's one, the physical tree. Bingo. Got it. Second, there is an animating life force, you know, of that tree. Um, third, though, and this is the one that's pretty cool, <laughs> is that there is the, this tree out here is also can be perceived as let's say a representative of the collective consciousness of all trees or the spirit or the oversoul of all trees so that my a consciousness or the consciousness that i express as this being called stephen farmer can collaborate and connect with this consciousness of this being expressing as a tree yeah. it's not the spirit um, expresses through us no mm -hmm. this is it this is spirit you're talking to one right now this is spirit expressing as just that one little word flips the flips the perspective anyway i'm kind of rambling a little bit you know i'm going all over the place but you know it, there is a thread there I'm, i know of truth yeah, and it's all interconnected, right? Sometimes it's hard. I mean, first of all, your rambling was beautiful. And secondly, um, you know, I find it difficult to talk about these things without also making connections to many other things as well, because it is all interconnected. And it right. is all, you know, this sounds so ridiculous and overly simplified, but it is all essentially the same thing, right? It is all energy. It is all vibration. It is consciousness. It is life force energy. So <clears throat> I really appreciate that you appreciate that about nature and that you understand that and you're helping people to realize that nature is not just like some removed state that we go and visit on a weekend for a walk in the park. Nature is everywhere all around us all the time and we are it and it is us. So that's a really beautiful perspective to bring in. And actually, I want to go back to something you just said, which was uh, a few minutes earlier, um, focusing on this topic that nature is very important. You know, you were, you were a psychotherapist and that has to do with the nature of the mind, you might say, right? And then you moved sort of, and then you moved from that to shamanism. But you said that like, oh, so then I just started doing shamanic psychotherapy and shamanic healing. But I know from having grown up in a family with a, psycho a psychotherapist mother and having grown up in the therapy community, because all her buddies were psychotherapists as well, that, um, you know, there is stigma against doing unusual things in psychotherapy. Psychotherapy tends to be pretty traditionally based. So I'm curious what that experience was like for you moving from 
traditional psychotherapy. I'm assuming you were doing it in a traditional way. And then suddenly you're in shamanism and you're introducing clients to that and your colleagues are discovering this and the word gets out in the community. What was that transition like for you as a person? You know, not just professionally. Good question. That's a really good question, Sinead. Um, <clears throat> I'd say it was actually relatively smooth. Oh, good. Um, part of it is, again, I started writing and publishing, you know, as I made this transition. I was also in a relationship at the time that was very supportive of that. So um, it made it, it, it helped make it pretty, sm relatively smooth. Um, I had, of course, once in a while questioned, uh, you know, having jumped off the, jumped off the edge, so to speak, you know, from psychotherapy. And yeah, I think I was, I would say both a combination of traditional and non-traditional. You know, I, I had, um, studied a lot about trauma and trauma recovery and i continued to study that took a three-year training that i loved in somatic experiencing you know body oriented um, being able to understand <clears throat> how the ptsd stuff <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> forgive me i'm sorry about that um how the ptsd stuff uh, uh the post-traumatic residuals really uh, we are beginning to go oh it's still living in the body in some way you know, it still exists, often as frozen or trapped energy as a way of adapting to the circumstances of the trauma, especially childhood trauma. You don't have it. You don't, can't think through it. You know, you just instinctively adapt to the situation that you grow up in. And the good news is there's there's methodologies that are showing up, such as somatic experiencing, EMDR, EFT, etc., and other uh, yoga, <laughs> you know, things like that. Um, Bessel van der Kolk, one of my heroes. The Body Keeps a Score. Great book, by the way. Anybody who's right. listening, <laughs> if you want to check it out, it's a great book because he's very exhaustive in terms of how he suggests, you know, we can approach uh, healing the trauma. There's others too. There's, you know, Peter Levine, Somatic Experience, and Gabor Maite. There's a few people out there, you know, that we're beginning to, that not beginning, but I have introduced methodologies and ways of thinking about it that I think are just like, oh, yes. Okay, so uh, the transition. Uh, what began to happen is I began to write about some of these areas that are related to shamanism, but not exclusive to shamanism. And I'll give you an example. Uh, the four books as a therapist, it had been like 10 years before since I published anything. And the first book out the shoot was called Sacred Ceremony. And now I'm seeing a lot of books about ceremony, which is great. You know, I'm glad. Um, <clears throat> but it was the intention of that book to take some, uh, to draw from what I had learned and practiced as a shamanic practitioner and introduce that in a book where anybody could, you know, who could you see? Many, many people are interested in sacred ceremony. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> that isn't necessarily, a, a, forgive the uh, froggy throat here. Sorry about that. Anyway, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, speaking. Anyway, it um, it led to other books and oracle cards you mentioned, Shani, uh, which are like user-friendly tarot. I think if you haven't messed around or played around with oracle cards, messed around is not the right way, but use them, you, you'll see that you can really get very, very powerful teachings and messages from oracle cards. And there's a lot of them available, not just mine, don't get me wrong. I was in a new age store the other day and I went, well, probably about 180 Oracle cards out there. But for, again, anybody who's listening, it's more important than ones that you resonate with. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so that's what I was saying. It just started me on the publication, you know, Power Animals, a book on Power Animals, Power Animal, uh, Power Animal Oracle cards, Message from Your Spirit Animal Oracle cards. Uh, what else? Sacred Ceremony, Power Animals, Animal Spirit Guides, which is a really cool book, by the way. I'll, you know, all he, false humility aside, because it's a, like a dictionary. If you see a, an animal in an unusual way or repeatedly, like many signs, but an animal, symbolic or physical, if you want, you can just like look it up and see if it's in this book. And it gives you some ideas about what the messages might be. 
So that's that's where the path led me. And then um, into ancestor work, you know, Healing Ancestral Karma, another book that uh, is fairly recent. It's about three years old. Uh, now, Messages from the Ancestors, Oracle Cards, of course. You know, and then, um, God, I was busy. You know, that last year and a half of the pandemic, man, I was a right fool, I got to tell you. I got uh, Messages from the Ancestors, Oracle Cards. Uh, messages from the spirits of nature oracle cards a book called animals personal tales of encounters with spirit oh. animals and then one i completely forgot get this that an australian publisher did called spirit animal message cards and they went my goodness you were busy but something to do during the pandemic you know well why not write some stuff well it, it almost feels bigger than just something to do it almost feels like you were guided in a way that would allow all of this material to land at a time when people are coming out of the pandemic and seeking more meaning you know people have been through a traumatic experience with that and it, it just do, it doesn't seem coincidental to me that the timing of that landed mm -hmm. when it did Mm -hmm. No, that's a really good point, Jenna. Um, it, you know, yes, it did give me something to do, but more, it's again, it's part of the calling. Mm -hmm. And again, I have, I love words. You know, I'm a wordsmith. I love playing with words. I love words with friends, you know, on the iPhone. Uh, um, and I just am like in awe, yeah. you know, of others' writings too. You know, the poetry, not, and I don't mean poems. I mean, like the poetry. Uh, the sacredness, you know, that, that comes across loud and clear in, in other people's writings, too. So I love words, you know, I, I, that's what I was, that's what I'm here to do, you know, is through those words. Uh, I say that I'm, uh, my purpose is a healer and a teacher and a communicator. And then I jokingly say, I'm not sure my wife would always agree with the communicator part, but, you know, <laughs> that's husband wife stuff, <laughs> you know. And God bless her. Yeah, she does. You know, we, we communicate very well. But anyway, the, so all of those characterize, you know, what my life has been like, really my life path. And I, I look forward to more, you know, I'm, I've been told I do downloads uh, just about every morning. I call them downloads. I'll sit in front of the computer. I don't do it longhand anymore. I've done journals like this, you know, for 15 years, 20 years, but I do it on the computer now. And uh, what I'll do, you know, as much as I can make it a daily practice is first off, I just do like a, a diary, <laughs> you know, a journal. This is what's happening to me today, you know, da 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 da. <laughs> and I set aside and I sit down like I just did and take a nice deep breath. And then I, I, I maybe it's the ancestors that come through because a lot of, a lot of um, information is coming through the ancestors in the last few years you know, including, like I said, one book and one set of Oracle cards so far. And then I see what they have to say. Ancestors are one of my spirit guides, my power animals, particularly, uh, or some, a voice I just call the teacher, you know, uh, or the elder spirit, the elder uh, guiding spirit that uh, came to me a few years ago and has since been with me. And I learned also has been with me since birth. Wow. Okay. So that I have to jump in here because that is my next question for you is, you know, although we started with your professional career, I suspect that your interesting experiences, let's say, started much earlier in your life. So you just referenced that this spirit guy has been with you since birth. Did you have any awareness as a child of, you know, having any, anything unusual happening around you or having any experiences? I mean, when, when did this really all start for you in your own awareness? Did it happen when you were a child? Hmm, reality is not quite what I think it is. Or was it when you were a teenager? Tell us about that, your origin story. Well, I, I wish I had, like some people have the stories of, of having visions and, you know, connections and contacts, you know, from day one or when they were, since they were five years old, but it's, it's that wasn't me, but I was a weird kid. You know, I, I really was different. I felt like I was really different, but I didn't have a, a context for it or understanding of it. Not raised in a heavily religious family. Uh, the, uh, the weirdness I'm talking about is that, you know, like many, many people I'm sure can relate to this growing up in a, whether you call it a dysfunctional family or an alcoholic family or some of the craziness that goes with a lot of families, whatever you call it. 
in my case, it was alcoholic family and all the characteristics, you know, that fit there. And I had three older siblings, uh, half siblings, you know, different, um, different father. Um, but I just remember the fights and I remember my adaptation. This is what I teach people is there's nothing wrong with you. You know, you you made the adaptations you did instinctively. There's not, there's nothing wrong with you. Get over that part. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we'll go from there. So realizing that the adaptations I made, Shanine, were very much to, to go inside, you know, and develop a rich, imaginal, you could call it fantastical uh, way of thinking. I uh, loved reading. I loved science fiction. Um, so it was more along those lines that being kind of a weird kid, you know, shy, really shy, you know, and um, that I think was the one thing that stands out, you know, as being, you know, very quite shy. However, let me see if I want to launch into this uh, story. I'm a storyteller too. Um, being quite shy, my, uh, that was my adaptation, I would say in general, you know, is to stay back. But I got very, very good at observing. I was also very sensitive like many of us, you know, that empathic uh, quality or characteristic and God knows, you know, why this one came through with that, but I did, you know, very empathic and tuned in. I knew probably 20 seconds before my father walked in the door, you know, that something was going to break loose, you know, and I'll get in a fight. I'll go to my room, which is again, a withdrawal. Now that's a characteristic that was very, very useful when I was young. It didn't help me in relationships, though. <laughs> Things got tough. Okay, well, I'm going to withdraw. You know? Oh, Stan, I relate to that so much. I really relate to that. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about the parallels between the two of you, Sinead. You know, there's 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 so much here that are, are so there's so 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 many similarities in your two experiences. It's really beautiful to witness right now. I have someone at the door. Can we pause the recording? Is that possible? Shamanic practice is a beautiful way to reconnect with yourself, Mother Earth, and the spirit of our universe. We live in a conscious, intelligent, and benevolent universe. And the universe wants to support our journey and life experiences, but we have to learn how to communicate with it. When I found shamanic practice, it was a journey of healing, remembering my true nature, and reconnecting with our ancient ways. It allowed me to connect to a lineage of energy beings, guides, angels, and guardians who act as a support system as I move through life. I'm Jenna Layden, founder of Star Family Wisdom, and I've trained with the Four Winds Society and have been initiated by a lineage of Peruvian shamans. I'm a certified Rites of the Moon Aiki Shamanic Initiation Practitioner and would love to invite you to our next Shamanic Initiation. The Rites of the Moon Aiki Shamanic Initiation is a 10-week program that allows you to receive 10 energetic transmissions along with learning about shamanic practice and tools to help you upgrade and transform your luminous energy field and to help you connect with luminous beings who can support your transformation. Receiving the rites of the Munai Ki helps you walk with protection and helps you step into your power as a healer and a human. You don't have to be a practicing shaman or healer to participate. All levels are welcome, but do be ready for powerful energetic shifts once you say yes to the shamanic path. In shamanic practice, we say that in moments like this, spirit is calling, and all we have to do is answer the call. You can follow the links in our show notes to join the Shamanic Initiation waitlist, and we'll email you when it's time to sign up and learn more. Anyways, yeah, you, you were commenting on the, the image back here, or the two images, actually, with the serpents and then the two intertwined serpents. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll just go ahead and take off on that. This is a, a friend of mine did this. And also it is one of the, the uh, Oracle cards in my Earth Magic Oracle card deck uh-huh. called DNA. Oh, okay. Explain. That's very intriguing. There's a book. Well, first off, uh, the very, very first spirit animal 
or power animal, which is a type of spirit animal that stays with you for a long time. Some traditions say that you're born with one. In shamanism, this is one of the types of guides that you work with is a power animal. But before I knew any of that or the vocabulary, I was in a men's event. We did this process where a, an animal came to you. It wasn't even called a spirit animal. What animal comes to you in this guided meditation? And snake showed up poof, just clear as a bell. And I went, well, that's cool. That's kind of cool. That sounds cool. Steven Snake Farmer, you know, <laughs> like in that movie with Kurt Russell. <laughs> He's, uh, his, his name is Snake, too. Anyway, I thought that was pretty cool, you know, but I didn't think much of it. It wasn't related to shamanism at that time because this was a few years before I, I, I did, uh, participated in the initiation, the two-day course. <clears throat> anyway, so um, think this has tracked me, you know, through since then, through the rest of my life. Example would be my daughter who had a boa constrictor named, uh, she named Pismo. <laughs> I don't know why. But uh, because she moved out, uh, she wasn't sure what to do. So I, my turn, you know, I took a turn at stewarding or tending to this amazing being. Uh, and then from there, I passed it along to uh, someone else who was interested in taking care of her. I don't know how she figured it was a her, but okay, so be it. <laughs> I never learned how to do that with a snake. Anyway, so there, there's that. And then there's this uh, book that came along. And this was after I, I was introduced to shamanism called The Cosmic Serpent by Jeremy Narby. The Cosmic Serpent, great book. I, it's only one of the books, I think of two or three books I've read twice. Mm -hmm. And it influenced me greatly to understand um, a, a little more about certain things. And uh, the subtitle, The Cosmic Serpent, the subtitle was DNA and the origins of shaman, uh, the origins of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Narvi was an anthropologist who did an exhaustive research. He went down to South America uh, and uh, did uh, participate in an ayahuasca mm -hmm. ceremony. And in ayahuasca, it's very common to get images of snakes and serpents, etc. Yeah. And so that kicked him into gear in studying old cultures and contemporary cultures and finding out how many images there are symbols of snakes we even have in the bible you know the snake accordingly that was a bad you know the evil snake but nonetheless that's an example today the caduceus you know what is it? it's an intertwined two intertwined serpents but also not just intertwined serpents although he found quite a few images in older cultures as well as contemporary cultures the canadian medical association same thing but he deduced from this that, um, especially in the older cultures where the symbols were abundant, is that shamans in the days gone by were able to view or to get images of DNA. Mm -hmm. uh, they had, no, yeah, isn't that a trip? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's yeah. that that ancient Grecian symbol for, for the healer is also yeah. linked to blind snakes. Yes. Isn't that, Isn't that interesting? And that's kind yeah. of like the representation of the masculine feminine energy intertwining within us, right? Which also represents our DNA intertwining. Yeah. Isn't that a trip? I mean, it yeah. just, it tripped me out, you know, to use an old phrase, you know, but it, it really grabbed hold of me and it just makes intuitive sense yeah. as well as the logic or if you will left brain of his research you know he was very exhausted he was an anthropologist you know scientist mm -hmm. that had experienced something more right brain you know the introduction through the plant medicine of you mm -hmm. know another arena mm -hmm. so um that became uh well it 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 soon became clear that my image of snake when i was uh, in the men's event Clearly, that was a power animal and has been uh, with me since since that happened, I think 30 some years ago. And um, one of the things there's if you think about what's the medicine of snake spirit, what's the power of snake spirit? Two things come to mind. One is <coughs> out of here. You're going to do that. You're out of here. No, sorry. 
uh, animal communication techniques. Yeah, not yet. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> I think he understood. Good boy, Scout. <laughs> anyway, the um, uh, tra lost my train of thought, but I'll get it right back. So um, the snake snake spirit also is about healing. Hmm. How does snake spirit be about healing? I'll give you a story. Okay, this I came across this, and I believe it was the Apache uh, back when that uh, if someone was called to be a healer, what they would do is they'd gather in community in a circle, have the fire there, uh, that the individual would dance around the fire and then a bunch of rattlesnakes were thrown in. Mm -hmm. And if the individual, um, you know, no doubt was bitten, uh, not if they were bitten, but when they were bitten, if they survived, they were considered to be a great healer. Now, is that story true? I have no idea to validate it, okay? But even if it's not like, uh, provably true in some mm. sense. What a great metaphor. How many yeah. times as healers have we been bitten? Okay. Promise right. myself I'd never do that. But anyway, how many times have we been bitten? You know, there's a suffering that goes with emerging as a healer. But it's not just suffering to suffer. It's suffering, you know, with a larger intent mm. yeah. that we may not be aware of at the time. We're in a place of suffering as a species right now. No, no brainer, you know, trying to figure all this out, climate change, you know, war, this is stupid war, you know, that, that um, a lot of people are being hurt. There's people suffering from drought, starvation, etc. You know, and the question on everybody's mind, what's going on here? You know, well, it's climate change, you know, it's this or it's that, but it's also an aspect of the evolution of our planet. Planet has been around four and a half billion years. The light from those galaxies has been is 4.6 billion years old. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it it helps us move through those sorts of challenges to zoom out and to to attempt to see a, at least a little bigger perspective, you know, on that. Like you said, and I think this, this it's a good point that you you know kind of bring up there around the current challenges and you know traumas that we're facing on Earth right now juxtaposed against the the conversation around spirit animals and power animals and guides and you know I think there, there's a lot of people who are caught in this place of how do I bridge these two parts of my reality you know how do I bridge this connection with spirit and all of the 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 gifts the wisdom the guidance we can get from that during a time like this on the planet, like how do we create a bridge and how can people bring what you were talking about around connection with animals and spirit into their world in a practical way right now? Like what sort of guidance would you have for people? Again, good question. Yeah, I think um, my, again, point of view is that a lot of uh, uh, us, our species is in fear right mm -hmm. now. And I relate it to some things I learned about trauma and trauma recovery, you know, and that's that you, you look at how an animal behaves, you know, when they're in fear, what do they do? They first, the fear is like assess, you know, what's going on. We go on alert. And then if there's a choice to leave, you know, there's a, if there, if, if the perception is one of feeling trapped, such as by all these circumstances, these, this feeling of being trapped, Hmm. Um, the first instinct is to escape. Uh, I hate to bring this up like the shootings. People were running like crazy to get away from that. That's just instinctive. You know, we get away from the danger of the perceived threat. What if you can't? <laughs> the next step is to fight your way out. All the violence that's going on, the increase in anxiety and depression, I'll get around to your question too. I've got you know more to say about this. I've always got something to say. <laughs> anyway, so um, but what if neither of those? What we typically think of as fight flight. What if neither of those work? We collapse, and literally the nervous system collapses. We aren't as effective, you know, at what we're doing. So. There's certain things I've been thinking actually in the download that I mentioned earlier, the downloads, I was told you, you got to write about resilience. Mm -hmm. 
because I think that's in a sense that's a small word but a big word at the same time it's to cultivate that resilience mm -hmm. and part of that I think is along the lines of what we're talking about and Jenna what your question was about is that relationship with guides mm -hmm. you know soul guides spirit guides whatever you want to call them but those in the invisible realm the ordinarily invisible realm that we can lean on a bit like ancestors you know benevolent ancestors oh elder ancestors I have a, a dear friend, Eva Blacktail Swan, who lives out in Colorado on an 80 acre uh, buffalo ranch with uh, what she calls the uh, old man, her husband. <laughs> and um, she has been steeped. Uh, she's a Cherokee medicine woman. And what she does is she goes out every day, you know, almost without fail, every day on the land and is called to attend to or pay attention to certain of the aspects of the natural world including the buffalo mm -hmm. and then what she'll do is she'll get downloads you know messages those messages are meant to convey to others so she writes them up when she gets back inside and typically there's a message of some sort that comes through that or as she said recently when i talked to her she said you know i get uh, letters from people saying god that this part was for me or this part was for me yes i understood this part this part this part so that's an example of receiving guidance is tuning into not just the natural world, but the, some people like angels, you know, I've not been strong on the angelic realm, but Archangel Michael, yeah, he shows up, you know, he shows up in a certain healing process. Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, but there's guidance from the wind, the spirit of the wind, go down to a river, the ocean, grandmother ocean. You know that we can receive like eva we can receive that guidance so that it makes life a little bit easier in all of the chaos and uncertainty that we're you know that we're faced with that's a big part of resilience is being able to bounce back mm -hmm. and there's others too i haven't developed a, the article yet or the ideas but i can throw out ideas that you you guys would go yeah of course yeah um one of the pieces of advice that i love referring to there is a uh, Esther Hicks is her name. You may have heard of her. She has she channels um, a group of, of entities that she calls Abraham. That's the name that was given to her. And that's great stuff, too. You know, I love to listen to what comes through Esther. But somebody uh, this is a few years ago, even before this was getting into a more critical phase here. They asked her, well, with all this stuff going on, and you name it, you know, all the stuff, you name whatever you want to call it, um, what do we do? And her answer, or Abraham, answer was so simple and yet so profound, which those two things together I like, simple and profound. Abraham, without hesitation, said, live your life. It's almost too simple. The mind wants to go, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Okay. But if you quiet the mind and you think about it, yeah. And yeah. that's what that means to you, you know, following your guidance. Yeah. You know, allowing yourself to appreciate things. Like, um, gosh, I'm hearing more and more about death doulas. <laughs> and these are people that uh, they work like in hospices and such like that to tend to those who are moving into the afterlife. Or like I heard one on TikTok say, you know what? There is an afterlife. <laughs> you know, I have some experiential evidence for that, you know, and in my own work. Oh, yeah, of course there is. It's different. Yeah, it's incredibly exciting. It really is incredibly exciting the time that we're living in now because we are gaining more awareness of those things, um, which is just really incredible to think about. And I want to I want to touch on for a moment, not to interrupt you, but for our audience's sake, um, because you're talking about in response to Jenna's question, um, you're talking about going to meet nature with a certain, it, it takes a, a quite a subtle intuitive approach to be able to hear what grandmother ocean is telling you or to be able to hear what a tree is telling you, right? So because that is something that people, I think most people would have to work up to that 
what what would you say to somebody who's never done anything like that before who may not even consider themselves to be an intuitive person even though we all are you know just a typical person living <clears throat> a life right now how can they know what that language is i mean earlier you were talking yeah. about how much you love language and you love words and there's a language from nature and it doesn't come with words necessarily right it's a different experience mm -hmm. of receiving information so what guidance would you give people on how they know what those voices are and sure. you know how they how to receive them sure you'd start with this take a journal you know or a pad that you can write on and a pen you know not your computer <laughs> leave that at home and go sit by a tree put your back against a tree and sandra ingerman suggested this when i talked to her some time ago and i really like this she said have a conversation with that tree not the spirit of the tree or just the conversation with the tree it's like when do you how old are you okay what was it like growing up what was it like to be a seed you know, how does it feel when the wind blows through your leaves, your branches? How does it feel when somebody injures you in some, you know, just start out, have a conversation as if you were talking to, you were interviewing a friend or somebody that you knew. I thought that was really, I think that's an excellent idea, you know, because it, it forms a, a baseline from which you then can develop uh, the capacity to communicate, you could say communicate spiritually. Go to the cloud. Oh, go sit with the clouds. Lay on your back. Remember, you do this as a used to do this as a kid, watching the clouds and seeing the shapes and everything. Have a conversation with that cloud. Where? How did you start? You know, I think I understand your water vapor, but you know, tell me more. You know, and write down what you get. Just trust what you get. It doesn't have to make uh, uh, believable sense. You know, right then. Just trust what you get. Trust what you get. I think that's the biggest key. I I remember just a really quick aside, Stephen, because I think you'll you'll appreciate this. I had my first experience talking to a tree last year, and I asked it what wisdom it had to share with us. And then I met another person on the trail who was who asked me if I talked to rocks and the trees. And I said, well, yeah. funny you asked because I just had an experience and I shared with him what the tree, you know, imparted. And this man said, wow, that was better than any guru could have produced. And I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I wrote it down. Yeah. Which is an interesting, um, also validation yeah. you know, for, for what you experienced with that tree. Oh. So then, um, circling around back to okay how, do, how what's the next step what do you do first off i think it's helpful to identify number one is that not everybody either hears things or sees images or visions etc so i what i promote is okay learn about your strongest sense you know and just how you take in the world you know set aside the spiritual stuff for a while how do you take in the world is it primarily what you see or that you hear that dialogue that goes on that inner voice or is it sensations in your body not just emotions but sensations in your body and um trust that one is probably going to be stronger you know there's one that's going to be primary and then maybe one that's secondary go with that first some people are more highly visual i'm very auditory you know i know that and uh, kinesthetic i sometimes call it kinesthetic or sensory you know, I, uh, clients walk in, I remember in th uh, therapy days too, clients would walk in, they'd be feeling, I'd feel what they're feeling, empathy, you know, the empathic part, the, the sensations in my body, which are the basis for emotions, but we want to get under that, you know, for sensations. So then the next exercise is to, let's use tree as an example, since they're still fortunately in abundance. That tree in your backyard or the tree in the neighborhood, or if you if you go into the forest in some way, you know, just see what tree calls to you. And say something like this telepathically, or if it's okay to do so, speak out loud. Thank you, tree. And now you're talking to not just the physical tree, like the conversation we talked about, Jenna, you described, but you're talking to the oversoul. Thank you, tree spirit. Thank you for any message that you can provide. And if you want, maybe a little sacred tobacco, 
or put some sage as a thank you, as an offering. This is the important part. Once you've posed the question, and I often pose those in forms of thank you, not, hey, tell me what I need to know. Thank you for telling me what I need to know right now. You know, it's a great way to pray too. Prayers Beautiful. of thanks. Beautiful. And I feel like then, you're talking about being receptive, being receptive, right? Being, yeah. being grateful, being receiving the energy, just practicing receiving and interacting with it. Mm -hmm. And just what my body did just then, take a breath. As we're talking about this, this is like so ingrained in me. Just take a breath because it opens you up to be receptive. It opens your body up and your senses up. Then pay attention to what you see internally or externally, what your attention is drawn to, what you hear. <laughs> Again, internally, the inner voice or something in the environment and or what you feel, the sensations you get in your body. You look up at the length of the tree and suddenly you get, you know, little prickles on the back of your neck. And you and then you hear the message in your inner voice, stand tall, example. Mm -hmm. Or you ask tree in that way, thank you tree for any message that I, I need to hear, I need to receive, better word, receive. Pay attention again, what you see, what you hear, what you feel. And you might hear something as relatively mundane as, go ahead and take that job offer. You know, you never know quite what's going to come across. I teach that about spirit animals too. You know, yes, you can deduce, you know, the message like a hummingbird has been like the last three days, every day I've seen a hummingbird. I mean, really close up to me, that's unusual. And you know what the message has consistently been? Light, lighten up. Oh, interesting. <laughs> we, we've had a very similar message come through in the last couple of weeks. I too had a lot of hummingbird connection and it was very much related to me stopping being so serious. <laughs> but yeah, I'm with you, Jenna. I'm with you. That's, you know, um, I, I, I parrot in a workshop years ago, I, they had us parody, parody that, you know, walk around and, you know, whatever. There were certain characters. One was, I'm serious. So I was walking around, you know, with other 40 people going, I'm serious. <laughs> this is, this is serious. This is life. This is really serious, you know? And of course, when you take it out and, and do a psychodrama role play with it, you know, you, then you, you can't help but smile. Just like when a hummingbird flies by, you look at this little being, oh, how can you not smile? And yeah. being a, a serious person, Jenna, which I can relate to. Um, yeah, it, it, the things sometimes I say this and I get a little wiggle of emotion. See what I mean? I, I, I feel these things in my body that sometimes the heaviness of what's going on, I catch it. That's the best way I describe it. And I think there are, there are waves, you know, in the collective. And if you're empathic at all, you can feel those. And sometimes it's hard to separate that from the personal, you know, whatever's going on personally. And so Hummingbird's message, wow, so grateful. And again, I, I get a wiggle of emotion when I say that, you know, I can feel this kind of drift upward to my eyes, you know, not quite to tears, but I don't need to, I don't need to go all that far with it just to go, yeah, thank you, Hummingbird. And always, by the way, I would add to that, always thank us. And again, there's that word trust again. And people say, well, how do I know I'm not just imagining this? And I go, of course you are. <laughs> I love that. Don't you like that? <laughs> of course you are. Imagination, let's refresh. See, I reframe it. I say, imagination is a bridge. How else are you going to get there? You know, without your imagination. It's not fantasy. It's not pretend. You can do that too, but... Let imagination be the bridge to this alternate reality that we're talking about that uh, eventually will become not so alternate. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's something you can step into. Sorry, sorry, Stephen, that we no, just please. don't accept, you know, 
uh, like if, if one thing occurs and we feel like there's something extraordinary about that, but then we do the old, oh no, I'm just being silly. I'm just making it up. I'm making this, you know, we don't have to only focus on that one thing. We can ask for that one thing to appear again. We can ask for validation. We can look for more information that supports what occurred. I find in my own experiences, it's never just one. It's always okay, we're going to give you this. And then, you know, a day or two later, they give me something else that matches or reinforces the first thing. And then I can ask them a question and maybe get a response that also reinforces it. There's just so many different ways of receiving and validating our experiences and making them, uh, sort of mapping them for ourselves, you know, in a way that begins to gradually make more sense. And so okay. I love how you're describing this. And I want to take it a little step further, if that's okay, by getting even more specific. This is, again, for, for our audience's benefit, because uh, there's a great interest in power animals. A lot of people, I find, are very interested in that. You know far better than I do about the general interest. But just with my meager amount of experience, um, it seems like that is a big area of, of interest for people. So how do you know? What if you're somebody who's an animal person? Like, I love all animals. A lot of my messages come through many different animals. I don't know who who or what my one specific power animal is. I have a suspicion, but I'm not sure. So if you're an animal person, you just like animals in general, and you want to know who your power animal is, how do you find that out? How do you know which well, one? If I may is? ask you, uh, Shanid, uh, if you'd be willing to share it, what's your suspicion? Uh, it's either Jaguar or Blair or Bear. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's try something just for fun, okay? And again, this uh, just put your hand over your heart for a sec, if, you, if you're willing. Okay. Take a deep breath, you know, again, back to receptivity. And just in your mind, you know, just play with me here. In your mind, ask Jaguar, are you my power animal? And see what you see, hear, feel. There you go. See the smile. Got it. So let's just start with that, okay? And then come on out. We'll leave Bear off to the side for now. Okay. I get a yes. Like I immediately get a yes from Jaguar. How did you, a lot. Good. How how did you get the yes based on what we're, I was talking about? See, hear, feel. So in my mind, Jaguar, who's always black, um, appears and is looking Visual. right at yeah there's there's direct eye contact which has happened like when, yeah okay when I, and it's just yes and there's this presence there's this feeling of another presence telling me that it's not me it's a different yeah it's, it's as if another presence another consciousness another being is responding to me so it's a feeling as well as that visual sensations yes See, I, that, I wanted to also thank you for your willingness I also want to point out, you know, my my inquiry was about you see, hear, feel, you know, and it sounds like you saw, you know, Jaguar just like right there looking you in the eyes, and then you had a sense, mm -hmm. you know, of this other presence, sensation. Thank you, because I think that's a good teaching, too. It's a good example of what I was talking about. Okay, to the question, though, power animals. Um, I distinguish, you know, animal spirit guide, spirit animal, any animal. I'm talking about cockroaches you know, or crickets or bugs or any animal that shows up in an unusual way and or repeatedly, you know, typically something big is going on. And that's that great spirit is sort of sending you a courier or a messenger, you know, and then as you open your mind and your heart to receive these messages, you begin to see that, oh, there is any animal can provide that, that sort of guidance versus a specific or more particular spirit animal which we'll call power animal some prefer the term totem that's okay I, it doesn't bother me i like power animal which comes from shamanism but it's not exclusive to shamanism so power animal is an animal or spirit animal more accurately that typically follows you through your life or is with you through your life for several years yes they can change over time as you enter a new developmental era for instance you know, maybe you hit 40 and, you know, there's been a particular power animal with you, but something is telling you, oh, you know, that uh, there's something going on that, that you're listening and paying attention. It's time to pay more attention to crow. Um, the other uh, aspect, the other meaning of power animal, too, is, again, sometimes it's the animal that's the spirit animal that's, born, that's with you when you're born, although we don't have that kind of support, that kind of context. 
So it's possible that this uh, being, Jaguar, for instance, has really been with you since birth. Right now, it's irrelevant. You know, he's, it's clear that he or she is with you now and has been for a while. It's just a matter of hanging on until you, you kind of got it. <laughs> you know, that this is a, you could say a primary spirit animal. So now it's a matter of you developing that relationship. And for any of the listeners, if you're in doubt and you have a suspicion, just like, again, thank you for doing that and the willingness uh, to do that, Sinead, ask, you know, like what, what we just did. So go, are you my power animal, Buffalo? And oh, there's Buffalo over there going, thank you, Buffalo, it's a demo. Yeah, you know, nodding his head so I see a visual, you know, or I get a feeling of that presence, or I just hear that in my uh, my mind, my inner voice. Yeah, <laughs> and that's okay. I'll take it. You know, that's enough. <laughs> so, and then you can always ask for validation. the The other thing, if you're not sure of what your power animal is, I think I believe it's still there. I think on my website. I have a way to go and find out your power animal and how to retrieve them. It's not that difficult. Or you can see a shamanic practitioner. They can do it on your behalf. You know, if you feel a little better about going that route. Um, really just ask, say, I'd like to know what my power animal is. As they say, ask the universe. You know, thank you for showing who my power animal is. You know, and you get kangaroo and you go, but I, I don't live in Australia. And then all of a sudden you're getting... <laughs> validation you know kangaroo yeah. shows up here kangaroo moving company kangaroo cartoons you know whatever okay i got it i got it that kind of thing so I, and I, the other things is can you have more than one yeah absolutely in shamanic work i think very likely you're going to have at least a couple you know maybe more over time snake wolf tortoise and uh raven how could i forget raven and raven and it, previously owl was with me great medicine as a therapist seeing in the shadows the darkness etc the wisdom etc that's a social but raven came along as i started doing more specifically shamanic work mm -hmm. so those are the four that continue to work with me for various purposes raven wolf guide wolf's great protector mm -hmm. uh tortoise is a reminder to stay close you know, stay grounded, uh, know when to move forward, know when to hold back, pull in, etc. You get the metaphor. And then, of course, snake, you know, as healer. In fact, I want to show you something. We have time? Yeah, we got a couple minutes. Oh, wow. You recognize that? Yeah, <laughs> yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> I was prompted to do that. Um, I, I, on my 70th birthday, it was um, important to me to do this, to recognize, number one, okay, I'm at a decade, you know, there's, there's more to go. You know, it's a new era. Second, because my father and my grandfather, God bless them, uh, who show up to me from time to time, especially my dad, uh, they both died at age 69. Wow. And, so and it's not like, well, I made it, you know, it's more, I'm not done yet. I keep being told, you know, hang in there, dude, we're not done with you yet. Well, so, clear, clearly with what you produced during the pandemic, <laughs> over the last couple yeah, of years, you're not done. You've got a lot, lot to give. <laughs> I tell you, if I may, just real quick, because I know we're running uh, close to the end. These are the new cards, one of the one deck of the new cards. And I thought, I'll just draw one for everybody. Oh, beautiful. Just, just to see if, it's, see if it speaks to you. I have no idea whether it will or not, but let's see if it speaks to you. This is a spirits of nature. Thank you, ancestors, and thank you, spirits of nature, for any message that could be communicated here in this format that would be useful, if not to all of the people, at least to a good portion of the people, as a, a reminder or a provocation in a good way or um, a direction. All right, let's see what we get. Forgive me. Oh, I'm kind of emotional today. Maybe that's just what's happening. Just go with it, Stephen. Stars. Mm. Navigation. Wow. And what it sparked for me, you know, immediately was just talking about the Jane Webb image and the stars and the 
kind of putting things in perspective. So even though the key word for this is navigation, yes, true. Navigation in another sense, a metaphor for how our ancestors and the, anc the ancestors used to navigate by the stars. But this is exactly along the lines of what we've been talking about here, navigation. That you can you can discover if you don't already know, you can discover those that help you navigate through this life. And again, during this period of um, uh, the uncertainty and the chaos and the upside downness feeling, you know, that I think many people can feel the vibes of, you know, at minimum personally as well as collectively, that it's really important more than ever, you know, to do your daily ritual, you know, spend time meditating. If yoga is your meditation, great, a physical movement of some sort or Tai Chi, Qigong, something like that. Uh, also spend time journaling, you know, write about your experiences, you know, stay in tune, stay in contact in any way you can, the support of others, you know, others that will, that you, when you, when you tell them, yeah, uh, I was talking to my spirit animal the other day and they don't go in a blank stare, you know, sorry, guys, just funny that. But others that will, um, those hang out with those people too. Don't get me wrong. You know, let's not d make more divisiveness, but also people like yourselves, you know, that, that you find community in something like this, for instance, that you have a community, not in some rigid fundamentalist way, but a community of friends. Yeah. You know, like I, I go out, I'll say hi to the neighbors. We'll get in a conversation. You know, they probably think I'm pretty weird. You know, if I told them what I did, I've done it, you know, before. No, I don't hold back, but you know, if we just talk and have a casual conversation, it's great to have that connection, that support. If you're a woman, hang out with other other women. If you're a man, hang out with other men. That that's important too. I, I would say, especially men who are, you know, open-hearted. It's harder for men. It's harder for men. We got we we men envy you you women. You know, <laughs> you can get together and really share emotions. You know, so readily. Uh, for us, it's it's a little bit more of a push, but the men out there that are listening to this, I think they're probably the ones that are listening probably do this, but I encourage, you know, go hang out with a man friend. You don't have to talk about spiritual stuff. Go and have coffee and talk about, you know, the weather. I don't care, you know, but just make contact. We've got to support each other during this process as best we can. Yeah. Best I, we can. That's such a beautiful note to end on, Stephen. And I... I want to reflect too on how the star card reflects our connection to the stars at Star Family Wisdom. And that, you know, we not only um, very much believe in connection with all of spirit and guides and angelic, you know, beings and all of the luminous beings who are there to support us, but also, you know, the higher, um, higher dimensional advanced civilizations that are out there that are also in the wings you know, supporting us. And I think there, there's a, a connection there that maybe came through in that card too. Excellent. Good. Well stated. Yeah. Well, well thank you so much for, for being with us today and for, for your openness and um, sharing, sharing your heart and your practice with us and with the audience. I think this is such an important time to bridge the, the spiritual and the physical in ways that, like you said, you know, give us that resilience to move through these yeah. sort of transformative times. So, so I know your work does that and people can find you on your website. We'll include all of the links to your work and how people can connect with you in our show notes. So everyone, please check out Stephen's work, get a reading with him, connect with him if that feels supportive to you. And, um, Thank you, Stephen. I'm, I'm excited to connect with you again at some point. This is a, a beautiful conversation. Thank you, Jenna. And thank you, Shanid. I, I really thank appreciate you. it. Yeah. And blessings to you. And thank you for your work, too. You know, you're reaching a lot of people. I know. Thank you. Well, as you said, we all have to support each other the best that we can. And so, you know, you're supporting us and our audience by being here today and sharing your wisdom and your experiences. And we're really grateful for that, Stephen. Thank you, honestly. Oh, you're very welcome. Time. And again, you, you know, uh, quoting Abraham, live your life. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. Then bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, what a beautiful conversation and reading at the end there. That was incredible.
Yes, it really was. He got, he teared up and, you know, I really appreciate what he said about men having difficulty with their emotions and needing to really work on that healing. It's so true. And we need to support men in doing that, just like men need to support women in their healing as well. So yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful conversation. I'm so glad we had him on today. That was wonderful. I know. And for, for anyone who is interested in uh, connecting with their power animal, like Steven said, he has resources on his site. We also have a power animal journey that you can take to help you connect with the spirit of that animal that might want to come through with you. So check that out if if you're you're excited to connect more and uh, establish that, that connection with new power animals in your life. And Thanks for watching and being with us today. This this felt like a, a ceremony in and of itself for me. I don't know about you, Sinead, but it felt, it felt like part of my practice today to be in this conversation with Stephen. Yes. Well, I mean, considering that we're both uh, shamanic practitioners and we both have a great love and respect for Mother Earth. Yeah, it really did feel very heart-centered and, and ceremonial. I just loved what he had to say. We We've got to learn more from him. And so everyone, thank you as always for being here with us for these wonderful conversations. We really love having you as part of our community. Share, like, and subscribe. You know how we feel about that. And uh, you can continue to get more beautiful content from us and from our guests. Um, and by all means, tell us what you think about what we have said here today, what Stephen had to say, whether you like this episode, if you'd like to see more of him and anything else that you'd like to share with us. We really, really love hearing from you. So thank you so much, everybody, from listen, for listening with us today, for being with us today. And we will see you again very soon. We'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.